What's going on guys? This is an unplanned um, 19th episode of Dispersing the Cloud. Uh, I'm on the road right now and I realized, it's Wednesday, I realized that I did not post a video um, on Sunday, which I was going to do. Uh, I just got so consumed with what I was doing, so I'm almost a whole week behind, but I'm going to post one on Friday, so we'll catch back up. Um, so this will be for the book Unfinished. Um, Unfinished is written by Richard Stearns. Um, first, let me recap the week that I missed here. We had some book drop-offs for um, some schools, so a lot of you know that I got my books in, and um, we've already distributed a good uh, two to three hundred books already uh, to different schools and then new orders and such. So that's pretty awesome. We got new mixes back from the studio. Um, again, this is a very, I say it's highly anticipated. It's very highly anticipated for the people who pre-ordered the album almost six months ago. So they're, uh, they're itching to get it. Studio is uh, still um, finishing up that and uh, we are almost done. We have... Um, Oh, we, I made some moves towards finding a new publisher for my next two books. Uh, one, all artwork's done, uh, the book is done, it just needs to be published. And then the second should be done by the end of this year, hopefully before Christmas. That way you guys can have two new books before uh, Christmas hits. And we did all the contract signing and first payments for the artwork. I'm having uh, one of my Buddy's wife, Melody Coggin, is going to be doing the artwork for my third book, so I'm super stoked about that, to have her involved. Uh, the process for this last week, obviously I've been running around with my head cut off, what's new? Um, same old, same old, but I'm finding out that momentum is key. Momentum's been key for me these last couple uh, weeks of getting all these different projects starting, so that's pretty awesome for me to, to really see some of the stuff that I've been, been putting the groundwork on come to fruition. Anyway, I'm trying to make it quick because I'm supposed to uh, head out and meet uh, Coach Zaleski and uh, the rest of the CDU staff to uh, kind of catch up with them. So let me bust through the book, Unfinished. Um, this was a spiritual book. Every once in a while, I'll do a spiritual book, and this was one of them. If you're not someone who already follows Christ, this book really won't be applicable to your life. Um, but if you are someone who does follow Christ, Unfinished is an awesome book. To, uh, to jump on. It was recommended to me by my buddy Aaron Sass, and Aaron Sass is one of the guys that climbed Mount Shasta with me uh, a, a couple weeks ago. So uh, the whole book, Unfinished, is about us being unfinished, for one, and then two, um, God's original plan or Christ's original plan on earth being unfinished. And so um, it kind of dives into this idea that although we do give our lives to Christ, um, there is still a mission here for us to accomplish. Um, and uh, they call it the Great Commission, or uh, go out ye into all the world and, and spread the gospel uh, to all the tribes, to every tongue, to every nation. Um, that's a paraphrase of the verse that the book is referring to. But the book is really challenging Christians who claim to love Christ, claim to um, follow Christ, to get out of their own comfort zone um, and to actually go out and um, share Christ's love with people. We get caught in a, well, I, I have a job, I gotta provide for my family, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And um, there's, a, there's some amazing stories in this book of people who have nine to five jobs and they feel that God's calling them to do something bigger. I think the nonprofit is called World Vision, where the, the author of this book actually was a CEO of um, a, a massive company making great money and decided to give that all up to be the CEO of this company called World Vision. Makes significantly less money, but he's giving back and uh, he's doing some amazing things throughout the world and being able to show the love of Christ, making less money, but still feeling like he's accomplishing um, the mission that he was put on this earth to do. Uh, that's really the first question of, um, of why we are here. Um, there's, a, there's a little phrase in there that I found really interesting. It said, if you're just a hunk of meat on a rock hurling through space, of course you're depressed. If I thought that was, I had no purpose and that was it, I'd be depressed too. Um, 
And that reminds me of the book uh, Waking the Dead by John Eldridge, one of my favorite authors. He talks about um, every human being having this, uh, having this story inside of us and we feel like things are not what they seem. There's a war going on and we play a huge part. He, and he makes the argument that movies like The Matrix, the reason they're so successful is because us as human beings, we have this very small truth inside of us that things are not what they seem. There's a spiritual war going on and we play a huge part in that war. In that war. Um, and so I really find, that's why I find John Eldridge so fascinating. Um, and this little, this little quote in this book uh, reminded me of his work. Um, and I think I just look for ways to get reminded about John Eldridge because he's the freaking man. Um, uh, part number two about this book is your suffering can be used for others. Um, I've learned this firsthand. I have friends who have really probably suffered more than I have and have really learned this firsthand that um, although we do go through trials and we go, do go through suffering here on earth, those stories can be related to other people and people can actually gain a little bit of comfort knowing that somebody else has gone through the same struggle as you. Uh, and so I really found that this part of the book was great just for people to hear that, hey, like your suffering matters. Your suffering isn't in vain. It literally can be used for good. Um, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about all things will be worked out for those who love him. And it's not, it doesn't mean that everything good is going to happen to you. It means that when bad things happen to you, there's this cool little thing where God takes it and he just flips it around. He ends up using it for good. And so uh, I loved that part of the book. Uh, but the book talks about head knowledge and the difference between being a disciple and actually having head knowledge. Uh, there's plenty of people... Um, and I'm guilty of this myself. Plenty of people who know a lot about the Bible, who have a lot of head knowledge, but don't necessarily dedicate their entire lives to discipling people and actually growing people. Uh, there's, I, I don't want to, I don't want to misquote somebody. I don't know who said this, but there's a great quote that I love that says, "If you are not willing to invest time into someone, you really shouldn't give them suggestions on how to change their life." Um, because it's really easy to walk by somebody on the street and be like, oh, look at this drug. Look at this druggie. Oh, God, get your life together. Well, you're judging him for not having his life together, but are you going to stick around and actually help him? Are you going to feed into his life? Um, hey, man, you really, uh, you really shouldn't get hammered so much. You get hammered every weekend. That's cool. Are you going to come out with me and uh, give me some positive things to do rather than hanging out with the – I mean, these are my friends – I got nothing else to do but hang out with them. Like, are you going to come hang out with me? That way I have something positive to do rather than getting hammered on the weekends? No. And then you probably shouldn't tell me how to live my life. Because there's a difference between um, head knowledge and then there's a difference between actually discipling people and um, and taking that head knowledge and, and actually putting it to, to use. You know, a lot of people want to say, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Right? Um, luckily for me, I'm, I'm in a position to where um, I don't have many finances that I have to take care of and I can actually spend a lot of my time giving back to different organizations and, and doing this tour that we're doing this summer and giving all the money to charity. And um, I really feel like those are the things in life that give us joy. And I don't do those things to like, make myself look good or, or pump myself up or, or whatever. It really feels good to do those things. So, um, again, head knowledge doesn't necessarily equate to, um, discipleship, which was, uh, a, a good insight. Um, is God your co-pilot? I'm gonna shut this notification off real quick. Um, this was interesting. Is God your co-pilot? If God's your co-pilot, um, you should probably switch seats. Probably should have him drive in the car. Um, that was like a little joke that was thrown in the book, just in an attempt to um, point out the obvious that we say like, "Oh yeah, I'm God's in my life. He's I'm doing these things." But like, if God told me to drop everything, if I felt like I should drop everything, move to Africa and, and dig wells, would I? 
Or would you say, no, that's for other people, that's not for me. Um, it's this idea of being completely sold out and open to whatever God really has for you. Because there is something about, there's something about doing what you were put on this planet to do. And regardless of if you know what that is, um, I feel that we find that um, mostly in feeding into other people and helping out other people, um, regardless of if you believe there's a God or, or into church or whatever, you know, like you just feel it in your soul. There's something on this planet I was meant to do, even if you don't know what that is, like maybe you don't know what it is yet, but you can feel a sense of purpose. There is something I just don't know what it is. Um, I have personally found that in Christ and some people do, some people don't, um, depending on, I'll talk about this later, depending on how hard you're looking for it. Um, to realize an adventure, you must leave home. This was actually a cool little callback to The Alchemist. I love The Alchemist. If you haven't read The Alchemist, stop what you're doing right now. We'll finish this video. But then go read The Alchemist. Um, Alchemist is a great story about uh, leaving on your adventure, your own personal legend, and what that looks like. You have to, if you're going to realize an adventure, you got to leave home. You got to get out of your comfort zone. One of the most uncomfortable things I ever did was leave this house, actually. Uh, I'm at uh, my friend Heidi's house. I used to live here. I lived here for about four years. This is where I lived while I had my, well, I had my corporate job. Um, all the amenities I could want. Super nice house. She always kept it clean and smelling good. Um, and one of the hardest things for me to do was to leave this comfort and to go and do what I'm doing now. I, there's nights I sleep in my car right now and I don't... Um, I don't have a bed because I'm on the road and I'm, and I'm actually doing what I was put on this planet to do. So uh, it's definitely outside of your comfort zone, um, but it's definitely an adventure. I'm in a different city um, almost every week and I'm playing events and I got projects going on and I'm doing charities and um, it's just fun. It's probably the most fun I've had ever and uh, I'm making a living doing it. So you gotta leave home to uh, realize your adventure. Overall, the book was a four-star rating if you are a Christian. If you're not a Christian, you're not gonna relate to a lot of it. It's gonna sound like a bunch of nonsense, like stop what you're doing um, and follow God. Um, so it's not gonna make a lot of sense. But if you are a follower of Christ and you wanna challenge yourself to step out of your comfort zone, and do more for other people. This is a great read. It's a challenging read, and I definitely recommend it. Um, next, two books that I'm knocking out right now, and I'm actually through one of them and knocking out the second one, and I should have that done by Friday so I can do another video, is Boomerang by Michael Lewis and The Happiness Hypothesis um, by Jonathan Hate It. I'm probably saying his name wrong. Sorry, Jonathan, I'm saying your name wrong. Deal with it. Upcoming uh, this following week, part of it's already over because, again, I'm late on the video. Uh, I'll be in Southern California doing some book readings, um, getting ready for some weddings. My buddy Dave is getting married um, on Saturday. I'm going to meet with him in Fresno tomorrow night, have dinner with him. Uh, I'm meeting with churches down here, talking to them about possibly playing some music for the tour. And so this was just kind of a, a week away from Northern California for me. And I have been slammed uh, ever since I got here um, trying, to, trying to get all the stuff I got to do while I'm here. But I'm excited about it. Last but not least, word of inspiration. When it comes to God, we don't know what we don't know. Um, this, was, this was kind of along the lines of this week we did a spiritual book. And for a lot of people, it doesn't relate. Um, forget what you think you know about God. We don't know all the things we don't know. But there's a verse that I always go back to. It says, uh, if you seek him with, with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your body, your spirit, you're just really seeking God, right? You will find him. You will find him. What, whatever you want to say that looks like, a lot of people will say, well, I don't really... I don't really believe in God. Well, that's great. When was the last time you sought after a spiritual creator? You actually sought after him. 
um, with all of your heart, not just like, oh, I wonder, but like really fervently seeking after an answer. Typically, you find answers when you put your brain to work and you put your heart behind that. And so I encourage everybody to do that. I will talk to you guys next time, which will be in like two days. Uh, I will see you on Friday and I will, uh, I'll make sure to get that book review out on time. That way you guys have it. I'll talk to you soon.